Adventure. Tonight, Ron Evans takes us to the South Pacific in his exciting story entitled A Spot of Bother in Paradise. Get you anything else, Missy Winnie? I don't think so, Amina. Perhaps a grapefruit later in the morning, dear. <sighs> My, what a lovely morning. The lagoon is so still and blue. Do you know, I think I might go walking along the beach later. Yes, I shall. After my grapefruit. John, he tell me, tell you, a fuel for electric generator running low. Oh, no, I shouldn't worry. A supply boat should be here any day now. Besides, we have plenty of candles in the store. How are things down in the village? Oh, fairly well, Missy Winnie. Something's running short, but supply boat, she calling in at Island Valley soon. Oh, if my dear husband were still alive, he'd be off in the launch to Benaro to see what the delay is all about. We do seem to be rather out of touch lately. There is shortwave lady or master used, Mrs. Winnie. John, he put it away in store when you went to Binalu to settle estate after Master died. Yes, yes, I remember. I told him to. Never could work the infernal thing. Me tell him to bling it out. You telephone Binalu. You ask about supply boat. Yes, but let us leave it a few days and see. I'm sure the people at Binalu must know we're waiting. Oh, I think I'll walk down and see what John is up to. He was going to mend the fence this morning. Me help you? No, 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 it's all right, my dear. Old I am, but I'm not an invalid yet. Miss Winnie, look, look across lagoon. No, 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 now keep calm. What is it? Ship, ship. Oh, it can only be the supply boat at last. No, it's bigger, much, much bigger. Oh, drag my old eyes. Can't see as well as I used to. Teeming straight for lagoon. Oh. Whatever can it be, then? Uh, ship, she come. It's a big uh, ship. I wish you two would keep calm. We've had ships here before. You only, know. only when me a baby. And a cruise ship, she came and anchored for one day off Lagoon. It stopped. It turned. He, big ship. Yes. I could see it clearly now. Uh, Mina, uh, go and get me a drink of lime juice. Uh, yes, Missy Willie. It, it got two funnel and guns on deck. Yes, I can see them, John. I think we're about to receive official visitors from this warship. It was early in 1942, and Mrs. Winifred Walker had lived on the small plantation island of Tukaroa for 50 years. Her husband, Gerald, had taken her there as a bride in 1892. He had developed the coconut plantation into a good commercial concern, with twice annual cargoes being sent to the larger Pacific island of Binaro for transshipment into larger vessels. They had lived an idyllic life together until Gerald died in 1940. Winifred had decided not to return to England and had instead lived alone in the two-story house tended by the Polynesian girl, Amina, and John, the odd job boy. Under Winifred Walker's management, the plantation still flourished. Now, on this day in May 1942, there was a fresh and rather frightening development for the old lady. A boat came off the grey warship and entered the lagoon. The people from the village came down to welcome the strangers who came ashore with guns and ignored them. They wore white uniforms with gold epaulets, were short in stature, and spoke a strange gibberish the islanders had never heard before. 
They came to the veranda of the house where Mrs. Walker waited to greet them. Her smile momentarily faded when she saw their faces, but being a lady noted for her equanimity, it quickly returned. Good morning. And whom do I have the pleasure of addressing? You are Mrs. Walker. I am indeed. And I did ask you a question, sir. I am Captain Shimoso of the Imperial Japanese Navy. I am here to take possession of this island. Oh, is that so? The last I heard, it belonged to the Dutch. Have they sold it, perhaps? It has been seized in the name of His Imperial Highness Emperor of Japan. Oh, how unpleasant. I did hear rumors that there was the possibility of a war sometime, but, but really I didn't for a moment believe it would happen so far south. There is a war, and there has been since December of last year. Between yourselves and the Dutch? Between Japan and the United States, Britain, and all countries with colonial territories in the Pacific. Goodness me, that is serious. I had no idea. Your house is requisitioned, and you will shortly be transferred to a civilian internment camp at Binaru. I see. Well, I think you'd better come inside. When was the last time you had visitors here? Oh, it must be, uh, let me see, uh, Yes, yes, all of eight months now. And you are the only European on the island? Oh, yes, indeed. But I'm used to it now. Akito, have the men search the island thoroughly. Report back here when it is complete. Oh, very good, Captain. You can take my word for it. It would be gross negligence on my part if the island were not searched. No military man has ever set foot on this island until today. Is it very possible that you knew nothing of the war? Not a thing. Isn't it strange? I did have an old radio, but it stopped working. Last year I was going to send it off to Bernardo for repair, but I forgot. <laughs> My memory isn't what it used to be, you know. Even when it was working, all one heard about was that awful war in Europe. This radio, where is it? Oh, it's inside. There, you can see it through the door. Very old, you know, it's fallen to bits inside. The high humidity we get here, I suppose. Oh, well, I'll have a drop more tea myself. <laughs> Amina, you call me, see, Winnie. Bring some more tea, dear. A sliced lemon, too. Very well. A very pretty girl. Yes. Her mother used to work here before her. She was one of the island's beauties, too. Um, tell me, Captain, why on earth would you go to all this trouble to capture a little atom like this? Because it has a certain strategic importance. Goodness, Miss Shirley, you're not thinking of building an ugly great fort here, are you? Nothing like that. A naval radio relay station, if you must know. A hut with a generator and tall aerial, that is all. No, oh, you can use the storehouse adjoining the house, if you like. I think it would be ideal. Oh, you are being very cooperative. Oh, dear me, why not? It does no good to bear grudges. There's a matter of interest. Uh, why do I have to be sent off to Bernardo? I shan't get in your way here. I thought that was clear. You are an enemy national. Therefore, you must be sent to an internment camp. Well, perhaps I'm a little dense, but why did the Germans not send all the French and Norwegians and so on to internment camps when they occupied their countries? Naturally, that would be impossible. It is our policy to send European nationals to camps. I have not made this rule, but I must keep it. A supply vessel will be calling with equipment in a few days. You will leave on it. Uh, a great pity. Fifty happy years I've spent on Tukaroa. Of course, I can always come back when it's all over, can't I? The war won't last forever. You will never be allowed back, madam. A Japanese manager will take over the plantation. Oh, I could understand that if you were to win the war, but that is hardly likely now, is it? Madam, the war is almost over now. The Americans are broken, their navy destroyed at Pearl Harbor. I suppose if I were you, I would also indulge in such wishful thinking, too. <laughs> it is a reality. The war is all but over. If you will excuse me, I have duties to attend to. Do you still want a tea, Missy Winnie? Yes, put the tray down there. Yeah, I think he got quite angry, Amina. The poor little fellow is suffering from the illusion that his country will win the war. What war, Missy Winnie? Mm, I think I'd better explain all that to you and John later. Uh, oh, meanwhile, run and tell John to get two of his friends in the village to keep a careful watch on what these little fellows are up to. After all, we are at war with them.
After Lieutenant Akito and his men had searched the island, a signal was sent off to the Japanese warship, which then steamed off to drop small forces on other islands in the group. Two days passed, during which time the Japanese converted the storehouse into a small radio relay station, a 30-foot antenna protruding up through its thatched roof. Life in the household went on much as usual for Mrs. Walker, although the two Japanese officers found her cheeriness a bit disconcerting at times. A Japanese cook moved into the kitchen and worked side by side with Amina, and this resulted in the meals being half Japanese. One thing the Japanese did not have with them were alcoholic drinks. Several times Mrs. Walker was asked, and each time she denied having any, although three cases of whiskey and a case of gin were hidden in the attic. Well, I must admit, that chicken was delicious. Oh, it would be pleasant if we had something to drink after. Amina made some lovely fresh lime juice today. I and... mean an alcoholic drink. Oh, I have no need for that. Of course, the islanders make some sort of concoction from coconut milk, some kind of wine. I shall wait until our stores come from Binaru. A message was received that the boat will be here tomorrow afternoon. Ah, good. I think you had better pack a few things in the morning, madam. Amina said she would like to go with me. Is it possible, Captain? It would not be allowed. The girl must stay here. She will retain her position of looking after this house and its occupants. Don't you ever have anything when you drink a toast to your king? Well, naturally, on special occasions. I change from orange pico to earl grey tea. Uh, come <laughs> along, Akito. I want to send a message to Benaro. John. Yes, Miss Winnie. Your friends are still watching the little strangers for me. Yes. Gondolo tell me this morning they make hole over other side lagoon. Put machine gun there. Do you remember the shortwave radio my husband used to use? Yes, Miss Winnie. He's in store. This afternoon, when it is quiet and nobody's around, I want you to put it in the attic. Yes, can do. You want me connect to electricity? All Mr. Gerald wires, they still there. Yes, yes. Do that for me, John. Do we have a, a long length of wire about? Japanese left long row outside the store. Tonight, I want you to get some. It will have to reach from the attic to the storeroom roof and up the Japanese aerial. But, but they mustn't find it. It will be easy. Every evening when it gets dark, I put it up before daylight can take it down. Very good, John. But I fear we might only need it tonight. <laughs> Between the house itself and the storehouse were several tall palm trees, and these effectively hid the wire leading to the Japanese aerial. John had little difficulty in setting everything up, and when the lights went off in the storehouse for the night, old Mrs. Walker went up to the attic where the young Polynesian man was waiting for her. Now, how do we go about this, I wonder? I remember my husband used to twiddle this knob here and call Binaru through this microphone... The only trouble is the Japanese will have control of the radio station there. Oh, what's a problem? Can you not just call for help, Miss? Oh, that's another problem. Is there anybody within hundreds of miles who could help? Oh, dear, if only I'd kept up to date with the news. Well, I'll twiddle this knob and see if anyone is talking in English. Dear, dear, it's worse than I expected. What would happen if you just talk into it? Yes, I could do that. First, I have to press this switch down. It says transmit. <gasps> Hello? Hello? Is there anybody from the Allied forces listening? This is a call for help. Now, a little to the left. I think you must turn it off transmit first, in case there is answer. Oh, yes, yes, of course. How silly of me. Oh, well, nobody was listening. I'll try again. And this is where I came into the picture. At the time, I was an army captain on special liaison service with the Royal Navy. We used to take small groups of commanders out in fast MTBs to smell out Japanese shore-based installations and create havoc wherever possible. I was in my small office on the island of Koratora, which we were using as a temporary base. My adjutant, Cliff Ellis, came in. Captain Watson? Oh, yes. What is it, Cliff? Uh, the Navy sent this across for you. 
Some odd call during the night. Female voice calling for help in good English. Yeah. Let me see. She kept changing the frequency and repeating the call. They managed to pinpoint it to within a 500 square mile area, which would place it about here on the map. The Benaru group, I'd say. Yeah, she didn't say much. Couldn't mean anything. The Japs are getting quite agitated about our operation, so this could be a rather crude attempt at a trap. Oh, we couldn't do much anyway, unless we were able to pinpoint the signal more accurately. Yes, but well, I think we'd better ignore it, Cliff. Tell the Navy boys to keep their ears open for anything else from the same source. No, nothing else, thank you, dear. I, I seem to have lost my appetite this morning. Something to drink, Missy Winnie? Well, perhaps a little grapefruit juice. Ah, Lieutenant, what is it? Bad news, Captain, from Binaro. All right, you can't tell me with the old lady here. The surprise ship was sunk an hour ago. It was attacked by American carrier-based fighters. But there are no Americans for a thousand miles. That was what we were led to believe. Didn't you say the American fleet was sunk at Pearl Harbor? Did Binaro say when a replacement ship was coming? A week at the earliest. It seems my role as hostess is going to continue for a while longer, Captain. <laughs> Well, John, shall we start again? I've got the knob all the way to the left. Transmit switch first, Missy. Oh, yes, yes. Hello, hello. This is Mrs. Walker of Tukaroa Island. I need help. Can anybody help me? Missy, I don't think you must say your name and where you are. Japanese may be listening. Oh, goodness me, you're right, John. Oh, dear, I'm not very good at this intrigue business, am I? Oh, well, it's done now. If they come for me, it can't be worse than being carried off to some prison camp at Binaro. The next day, we had just come in from a mission when another message came from the Navy lads, and this time they had done a really good job. Mrs. Walker of Tukaroa, huh? Yes, that's the small atoll here. Tricky. If the Japs picked up a message, she'll be in big trouble. It could still be a trap. The Navy did a good job of checking up on her. She's a real person, and she lives on a plantation. But we don't know a thing about the atoll itself. It could be swarming with Japs. Now, Cliff, we need to know more before mounting an operation. And another thing, it's a bit suspicious her giving her identity away so easily. Only the once, the first transmission. After that, it was the same message as the previous night. And it says here that her voice is genuinely English, too. Yeah. What have we got on for the next three days? Nothing in particular. Spot of surveillance where possible. Okay, we'll get ourselves a good sleep and leave tomorrow. If the Navy lads can reply, if she calls up tonight, get them to find out the situation on Tukaroa. You never know. It might be worth waiting. Hello? Hello? Is anybody listening in? Hello? 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 Oh, I'm becoming something of an expert at this now. But I don't think there's anyone out there who understands me. Maybe the radio should not work proper, Missy. Yes, I never thought of that. Oh, dearie me, I could just be talking to myself. Come in, Mrs. Walker. Do you hear me? Come in on this frequency, Mrs. Walker. Over. John, they have heard me. Talk to him. I will do switch. Hello? This is Mrs. Walker. I can hear you. Are you free to talk? Over. Yes, but the Japanese are on the island. Twenty of them. They've built a, a radio relay station. Listen in on this frequency at 0300 and I will come back to you. Over. Yes, I understand. Three o'clock in the morning, in two hours. Yes, yes, I'll be waiting. Mrs. Walker's message was relayed from the naval station to our MTB. That must be the Jap relay station we've been looking for. Yes, I was just thinking that. Well, we, we couldn't reach Tukaroa tonight and I don't want to risk a daylight raid. Yes, we'll have a go tomorrow night. We'll send a direct message to the old girl at 0300, telling her to stay off the air and that she'll get a message from us by other means tomorrow. How will you manage that? Remember that fellow who helped us a couple of weeks ago on Mirindu Atoll? Hmm? We can use him. You mean land him on Tukaroa tomorrow? Japs might spot him. Uh -uh, no, he can take his outrigger with him. He can drop him about ten miles offshore before noon. Then he can meet us when we land and direct us to the radio relay station. Missy, they come tonight. What's that, John? Soldiers, come for you tonight. How do you know? Man coming to village, hour back. He's from another island. 
He not can come up to the house. Fear of Japanese recognizing him as stranger. He sent for me, give you a message. Oh, they do work in some strange ways, don't they? Well, I suppose it is genuine. He has told all villagers, stay in huts, they be safe. Did he give a time? No, just after dark. That evening, as the sun was setting, Mrs. Walker sat down to dinner with the two Japanese officers. During a late afternoon, John had retrieved the whiskey and gin from his hiding place, and by now, knowing most of the men in the Japanese garrison, was sharing it out to them. In a long Victorian sideboard were two bottles of whiskey, and Mrs. Walker bided her time until the meal was nearly finished. Uh, Amina? Uh, yes, Mrs. Winnie. You can give these two gentlemen their pleasant surprise now. Oh. And don't forget the glasses. What is this? Well, you've asked for it so often these last few days. You must surely recognize uh -huh. it. Whiskey? But you said you had none. My husband left it, poor soul. To be truthful with you, I'd forgotten I had it until today. It's one of the best brands, Captain. Uh -huh. Give me a large one, Lieutenant. That must be three months since I have tasted a good whiskey. Is this all you have? There are another dozen bottles. Plenty to keep you going until your supply boat arrives. Good. Lieutenant Bakifo. Let us celebrate the finding of the whiskey. Yes. Tonight, I think I can drink a whole bottle to myself. Oh, you're welcome, I'm sure. At exactly 2,200 hours, we drew close to the Tukaroa Lagoon. Engines at slow speed and all lights out. And then, when we were two miles from the beach, we opened up the engines and turned on the two searchlights on the bow. The stern went down and the bow up as our speed increased to 30 knots. The men manning two machine guns on either side. In the far distance, I could make out the approaching lights of the house. And I wondered what was going on in there, imagining a poor old lady waiting in terror of her life. How wrong I was. Yes, I get homesick. I would not be a man if I did not. It could be a long time before you see it again. You could end up in a prisoner of war camp. <laughs> no, no, Mrs. Walker. You won't make me angry. But have you forgotten? It is you who is going to a prison camp. We will fight on. And who knows, one day, march through the streets of America, even London. Oh, yes, of course. As prisoners. <laughs> She's funny, Captain. A funny, funny, foolish old woman. Old, but not foolish. Wait and see. There is nothing to wait for. The war is over for you. In two or three years' time, perhaps you... Uh, uh, huh? Did you I... hear that? The war is still going on for all of us. I, I wonder who this... Akito, go outside and see what is happening. The captain. Your, your gun, where is your gun? It was here. Amina took your guns away. We didn't what? think you'd need. Akito, go as I order. Oh, there, 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 there. All right, hands away, everybody. Oh, how lovely. A British officer. Why, you're just in time for a cup of tea. As I burst open the door and covered the room with my Sten gun, I was amazed to see Mrs. Walker seated at the table with a beaming face. Two bewildered Japanese officers standing to one side, eyes bulging in amazement at me. I took up the old lady's offer of tea while my men blew up the radio relay station. The Polynesian girl tearfully brought down Mrs. Walker's suitcase from the bedroom and begged to be taken along with her. I agreed in view of Mrs. Walker's age. She would need someone in attendance on the long journey back. Uh, excuse me, sir. Signal from the Admiralty. Yeah, let's have a look. Mm, from the top, eh? <laughs> well, well. Good news, Captain. For you in particular. I'm instructed to hold the island of Tukaroa, and the Americans are at this moment landing at Binaro for permanent occupation. It looks like you won't have to leave your island paradise, Mrs. Walker. Oh, now, isn't that simply wonderful? You know, I felt it in my old bones. Oh, my, how thrilling. Amina? Uh, yes, Mr. Winnie? Bring a bottle of whiskey for the gentleman. <laughs> I think there's been enough whiskey drunk this evening, thank you. I'll settle for another cup of tea. Hi. 
High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.